So will an insurance company now pay for a new roof? We're in 2024. What are some of the issues? What are some of the reasons why they may not? And there's a lot of them. Welcome to my channel. My name is Mike Keeler. I'm a licensed public adjuster in the state of Florida. I am your favorite YouTube public adjuster and the only YouTube public adjuster. So every slide that we go through, remember the title of this video, which is will an insurance company pay for a new roof? So one of the most crucial points that people always seem to kind of mess up is these two simple things, what happened and when. This is the crux that causes the most issues when your claim is denied, all right? So these issues or these points, it's going to determine whether the insurance company pays for your roof or not, depending on what you say. Okay. What or how did your roof get damaged? In other words, was it wind or hail? Okay. Of the utmost importance, when, when, what date was the storm? This is very, very important. You just can't call up the insurance company when you find a leak and say, hey, I've got a leak in the inside of my house. So there's something wrong with my roof. You can't do that. That is not the appropriate way. Your claim will get denied and you'll be left helpless paying for the insurance and paying for a new roof, which now, obviously, you have to put on a new roof because the insurance company denies it. They've got 15, 20 years, unless you live in Florida where there's a possibility of a hurricane, you, they've got 15, 20 years of premiums coming with no type of roof claim. Another big mistake that happens, people call up and, and will say, um, there was a storm, rain came, caused my roof to leak, now I've got damage inside. Stop using this word, please. It's a bad word to use this by itself. If you're gonna use some terminology with rain, use this, wind-driven rain. Don't ever say, there was a storm and the rain caused a leak in my roof. Don't say that. Because it all comes back to this. Wind and hail. One of these two. Hail is very unlikely to cause a leak into your interior. It is more than likely going to be from wind. So you find a leak, your wife says, you know what, honey, I'm gonna call the insurance company tomorrow. Hold on, you've got time, you've got time. So until you've had a roofer come to your house to inspect everything, don't call the insurance company yet, okay? We're gonna get into that a little bit more. Again, if, and let me let me preface something, you know, roofers are friends, we need them, they're good guys. Um, they try to help people as much as possible. The one thing that I've seen countless times is people getting dates from a roofing company or roofer about a big storm was on this date, so use this date, and that was maybe six months ago. That day and that game is over. You have to have documented, strong weather data, which means if it's wind, 50 miles per hour plus consistent winds, right? Hail, got to have video somewhere, and we'll get into this, of the hail storm. I mean, I, I, I know the roofers are trying to help, but this is so important. If you screw up and give the insurance company the wrong date because somebody tells you that there was severe weather on that date, and they look into it and there really isn't severe weather, okay? 
Like maybe you're thinking it's a lot of wind, and then you see the, the true weather data that shows 35 mile per hour winds only. Okay, your claim is done. It's done, it's over, cause a lot of issues. All right. And I see some, and, and again, I'm not picking on roofers, but I see some roofers that post YouTube videos about in dealing with the insurance company, and I cringe. I cringe. There's so much legal, there's such a big part legally involved with this that they have no idea. And then some of the things they're acting like they're pros dealing with claim adjusters, because they talk with a claim adjuster that comes out, does not make you a pro. Stop giving bad advice. I see so many videos on this and I cringe. Um, so when you call, keep everything brief, right? Let me give you kind of a role play. Hi, my name's John Smith. I'd like to report a roof damage claim. When did it happen? Again, make sure you have the dates. It happened July 16th of 2024. Okay, what's damaged? We're not entirely sure right now. Seems like the roof and the interior um, in the bathroom. But again, we are having somebody come to kind of evaluate the damages. That's it. Okay. They may ask you other questions. Have you had any roof repairs? No, we haven't had roof repairs. The roof is 10 years old. And everything else, keep it very simple and to the point and brief and move on. So let's talk about the insurance adjuster field visit. You know, I put the joker up here because a lot of these guys, majority of them, they're jokers. What they do to homeowners. They'll tell you something right in front of your face and then it doesn't happen. And then they'll blame it on the insurance company, so on and so forth. Listen, you can try to befriend them. That's not gonna work, okay? They are there to protect the insurance company. Doesn't matter if they're quote unquote independent or if they tell you they're quote unquote independent. If they do not do what the insurance company wants them to do, they will never work for the insurance company again. Okay? If you know that, you've got all the knowledge in your hand to deal, know how to deal with them. So please review to my previous slides again, the dates, right? The dates are very important. Storm, so on and so forth. If the, if the adjuster gets on the roof, videotape them. You can videotape them. If they say, we're not going to, I'm cutting off the inspection because you can't videotape me, of course you can. Yes, you can. What are they doing that they don't want to be videotaped? Ask yourself that question. Okay. If possible, maybe your roofer can go out there. Maybe he could be with them. Okay. But you definitely want your roofer to come out before the insurance company people come out, okay? That is for sure. If they could come out during the time the joker, aka claim adjuster for the insurance company comes out, great. So we all know the Darth Vader song, right? This is the engineer for the insurance company, all right? So after the adjuster comes out, if they are going to deny the claim, they will bring in Darth Vader, okay? The only reason they bring out Darth Vader, AKA the engineer, is to deny your claim. It's the only reason. They're not there to help. They're not there to evaluate the damages. It's not to give you a fair chance and they really just want to find out what's going on with the roof no 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 this is it only reason okay if they call to try and set up an appointment politely say you know what let me get back to you we gotta figure out time and then as i always say with an attorney's a last resort if you're not being represented you may want to give an attorney a call because they may get their engineer out prior to the insurance company having their Darth Vader character, um, the fraudulent engineer who works only for the insurance company and writes these BS reports, 
at least this attorney can try to get ahead of the game if it makes financial sense and depending how bad your damages are okay reason why I say that if it's only a roof and your roof is fifteen thousand dollars and you have depreciation it's 20 years old we're gonna get into that doesn't make sense the the attorney won't spend money on that and again last resort for the attorney will be a last person that you call to help you because their fees are so high okay more than likely 40 percent if you're lucky you find somebody who takes it for 30 33 and a third third okay but very high so with insurance companies last five years last three years no more free lunch they are at war with homeowners especially Florida for roof claims really doesn't matter what state you live they're no longer paying for roof claims like they did before such a big expense for them they are now fighting almost every roof claim comes with an engineer now so what we have here in Florida you're even Florida now which used to be the most friendly um, state because of our weather climate and the severe weather and winds that we have from hurricanes tropical storms and tornadoes right it used to be very friendly because so many people had damaged their roof because of every year there are multiple wind events that we do have okay but now the insurance company has paid off the politicians all the Republicans DeSantis got 10 million dollars and they passed laws that helped insurance companies and hurt homeowners it's gonna make it very difficult for anybody in Florida you you have to file now 2024 started in 2023 every roof claim has to turn into a lawsuit the insurance companies in Florida won't pay don't forget if you like this video subscribe to the channel you'll see other videos everything that has to do with homeowners insurance claims water damage if you take a look I have and this one's a roof claim I probably have 30 other roof damage claims uh, claim videos on my channel so take a look through everything so it comes back to the question will the insurance company pay will they pay well now I hate to say it 99% of the time in Florida no gonna have to sue them other states it's it's jumped up dramatically I would probably say 75 percent to 90 percent no so you have you know let, let's say 10 to 25 percent although this is very rare the 25 percent you have a 10 to 25 percent chance if you live in a different state of getting a roof claim paid but these numbers of 25 percent is shrinking it's going more towards 10 to 15 percent chance that if you live in a state other than Florida that the insurance company will pay for a roof replacement and any damages on the interior <clears throat> so what can you do help what can we do Mike so because of the changes of laws in so many areas and the way these insurance companies are handling roof claims now I really think you need to hire somebody right off the bat public adjuster and attorney if you live in Florida that is not negotiable no more if you go into the claim by yourself you're you have the potential of really screwing up everything to where nobody's going to be able to help you moving forward for that roof claim again if you're in Florida okay you'll just know what the attorney obviously as I mentioned their fees are going to be much higher that's why I want to say keep that as a last resort um, the good part about hiring a public adjuster or an attorney they're going to handle everything from the start to the finish okay and um, obviously the depending on 
the amount of the claim would weigh in whether it's even worth it. Um, and I think I have that in one of these slides. So one of the other things you want to do to put you in a better position to get the insurance company to pay, even though it's such a small possibility now, this will still help if you have to file a lawsuit, you want to do this. Get the roofer to inspect and document everything. Keep a video, take photos, chalk it. What we mean by chalk it is, let, let, let's just say there's an area, um, let's say there's an area that um, they chalk it like this. It's not really dark enough, so let me go this color. Okay, bad spot, bad spot. Let's say this is chalk, bad spot, bad spot, right? Bad spot, bad spot. And then they take photos and or video of this to show the insurance company all the bad parts of the roof, all right? Um, have him put on his estimate these specific words or somewhere in his own writing or words. The roof needs to be replaced due to wind damage or if it's hail damage, right? So the only two ways you can really get the insurance company to pay is from these two perils, we call them. High winds or hail. And you want to gather in both of these instances, as I talked about in the previous slide, gather as much evidence as possible. Especially if you, you believe yourself there's a specific date or if a roofer, friend, neighbor, or somebody else told you about the specific date and other people. Check the internet. Let's say you live in Fort Myers, Florida and there was a storm, okay? Put in Fort Myers, Florida storm. See what comes up. Local papers you may want to check. Another great source that is very underrated is Facebook. So if you have people in your community, there are a lot of community, um, uh, pay, not pages, but like community groups, I meant, on Facebook. So Dirk, during Hurricane Ian, Cape Coral, Florida, which was heavily hit, the highest um, amount of winds for Hurricane Ian a year and a half ago in September of 2022, Cape Coral residents had their own forums. It was pretty cool. Like they were um, recommending roofers and who can help out and all this other stuff. So your town may have something like that. There's also Nextdoor, right? So all these great places that you can get information to substantiate and document and give evidence towards this quote unquote storm. You may want to check Instagram, Twitter, least likely, but these three things are great. Because you want to show the wind or hail and what it did to either your house or other people's houses in the community. So, as I talked about before, if you don't have a public adjuster and attorney representing you at any point, whether it's a beginning or middle of claim or what have you, um, the way you can try to get the insurance company to pay is you get the estimate for the roof and any interior damages. You're going to send your documentation to the insurance company because you aren't represented. Cross your fingers, okay? It's unlikely in this day and age, in 2024 and beyond, that the insurance company will pay your claim. If you're in Florida, no way. Other states, you have a slight possibility. So this is it. This is the conclusion. Um, basically, the three main points I think we can all take away from this video is I recommend getting somebody to help you from the start of your roof claim. Okay, The insurance companies are at war with homeowners on roof claims. They don't want to pay them anymore. And let's talk about this. I touched on it briefly. Is it worth it? Okay. Now let's do some quick math. Is it worth it? Is it worth hiring somebody? Is it going to be worth fighting it, filing a lawsuit, so on and so forth? We're gonna take a look at some numbers. Let's say you have, normally shingle roofs do not go beyond 25,000 unless you have a very big roof, okay? Generally speaking, around the country, it's about $600 to, at the high point, 750, 
okay? A square. Now, a square is basically, let me explain this. So let's say your roof is 3,000 square feet, okay? That would mean your roof is 30 squares. Square is 100, okay? So for a asphalt shingle roof, 600 to 750 is about the going rate. Depends where you live. So a 2,000 square roof is going to run you, what, 12,000 to, let's just say, 15,000 or so. Then there might be other things like wood and um, if there's soffits or, or um, facial boards, stuff like that. But generally speaking, it's pretty consistent. So let's say it's 15,000. Okay, you think about filing your roof claim. If your roof is 15 years old, now these insurance companies are going to depreciate it. You're going to face probably at least 60% depreciation. Okay, so what does that come to? Let's just make math easy. It's a little over 8,000. Let's just say 8,000. 15,000 minus 8, now that's 7,000. Okay. If it's wind and you're in Florida, you got 2% probably wind deductible. So let's just say on that house, your wind deductible is 4,000. That's gonna leave you with $3,000. Is it worth filing a claim then? It's not. Now, if you have a concrete roof, those numbers change dramatically. It puts a little bit more value, okay? Concrete roofs average, you know, it depends where exactly you're at. Could go 1,200 to high as 1,700 a square, okay? So um, that's why I mean, is it worth it? Because it may not be worth it unless you have a roof with value over $30,000. And this is what we face with and what we are faced with now, especially here in Florida. Thanks for watching this video. I know it was long. Hopefully it was helpful. If you have a question, need help with a claim, this is my contact information. Okay, my name is Mike Keeler, licensed public adjuster in Florida, your favorite and only YouTube public adjuster.